Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. And if you are getting calls from 1-800 numbers and random places in Montana, spammers are on the rise once again. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the show, but just be aware out for spammers. Um, I just got a, a message the other day saying that uh, my social security number was suspended, which is impossible, just so you guys know. All right, let's talk about the weather as things are starting to uh, heat up a bit this weekend as well. Your high is going to be 36, which is much better because yesterday the high was 24. Uh, Saturday, your high is going to be 41. And uh, there were some people saying that Sunday night was going to see as high as uh, 50 degrees, but with the partly, uh, partly uh, cloudy rain snow mixture happening through Sunday uh, night and Monday, we might not be able to see some of that warmer temperature. But who knows? You never know. It might be just sunny enough where the w the weather will get just a bit warmer. All right, let's talk about some of the uh, news things and more of my own uh, personal news. Um, just started last fr Monday, I've been getting hounded by a bunch of robot calls. Uh, the goal is, if you ever get calls from people that you don't recognize, don't answer the phone, but also don't ignore the phone number because a lot of times they just have a robot that just dials the number automatically. So my tips for you are completely ignore it. Don't reject it. Ignore, don't reject, and the spam callers will eventually stop calling you as they will move on to the next numbers in their robotic rotation. The state of Montana uh, passed uh, uh, in the 90s a law that basically forbode any kind of robotic calls to be called through the state of Montana, but most of these robot calls are from out of state, so it doesn't really matter at that point. So let's talk about some local news, uh, more locally, uh, actually more than down the street. Old Post is closed. Old Post uh, uh, did their last day last night where they only accepted uh, cash as they might be uh, filing for bankruptcy. So they announced uh, Wednesday in a Facebook post, this week they will close their doors as of 9 p.m. Thursday night. Howling was met with a, quite a bit of folks. Uh, a lot of people were shocked to see that this happened, especially the employees who also were told that the old post would be closing on Wednesday as well. Another thing that I found fascinating is that the uh, that the bar, the pub, the old post is actually a nonprofit under the American Legion Forgotten Warrior Post 101. Um, so one of the big things is that there's $22,000 in alleged debt. Uh, an accounting firm, Campbell and Associates PC, was hired to run the books uh, for several years of uh, old post and taxes, and they claimed that the old post didn't pay $22,389 in bills for services and is suing them. So right now it's currently um, just kind of up in the end to see what's going on, and I'll have more about this some other time. Um, state news, oh, or regional more, more, more likely, is the Keystone XL pipeline leaked. Um, the 300, 383,000 gallons of oil in a 2,500 square yard of land, according to the company, they discovered uh, a drop in pressure on Tuesday, when which they closed it. Uh, they still don't know a lot, uh, a lot of about what's going on. Uh, the Indigenous Environmental Network, an, an environmental justi justice nonprofit group, responded to the spill with concern by saying, this is exactly the kind of spill we were worried about when it comes to the Keystone XL pipeline being built. It has never been a pipeline breaks, but rather when. Um, said Joyce Brown, Indigenous uh, Environmental Network frontline community organizer. The Keystone XL uh, pipeline stretches for, for more than 2,600 miles from Alberta, Canada, Canada east into uh, Ma uh, Manitoba, and then south to Texas. Another spill in 2017 in South Dakota reached 210,000 gallons. Um, and back to this spill, it, with about half an Olympic swimming pool worth of oil covering a half an anchor. This leak is among the largest in the state, said uh, Carl Rockman, who directs the North Dakota Department of Environmental Quality's Division of Water. Uh, but the spill does not appear to pose an immediate threat to public health. No injuries or impacts on animals have been reported. TC Energy State said on a, in a statement, adding the oil is now contained. In national news, the House officially voted in a majority of 232 to 196 for the official impeachment inquiry, which will see months and months of interviews, testimonies, um, speaking with lots of people. The next phase, uh, the popular standing of impeachment will largely depend on the impact of witness witnesses in opening hearings, and this week's vote is what make those hearings happen. So those are some of the things that are happening in the news. I have... A bunch of new programs. They're going to be uh, uh, airing on MCAT. Uh, let me just vamp a little bit because my program just <laughs> crashed on me as I was talking. Um, but 
there's a bunch of new programs that are going to air on MCAT. And if you want any more information about them, you can go to MCAT.org. Um, they're available on video on demand. Uh, but also, I wanted to quickly mention is that there is uh, all the uh, candidates are up there. So uh, by next Tuesday is elections. So if you guys want to learn more information about your candidates, you can go to MCAT.org. If you go to MCAT.org, you can go to watch channel 190, and you can see all the people that are running for city council wards. So there's a bunch of new people, a bunch of familiar faces. Um, if you are interested in uh, having a face to a name, this is the perfect opportunity for you guys to check it out. All you gotta do is go to MCAT.org. All right, let's see if I can actually get this video playing. Hmm, looks, it looks like it's good, but if it fails, it's the computer's fault, not mine, I swear. All right, without further ado, here are the new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT, and then when I come back, I got some horrible movies that are coming out this weekend, so stay with me. For the purposes of this tour, um, it could really go a long way to illustrating what we're trying to do. So this stop right here will have a concrete pad poured for it um, that will be ADA compliant uh, to enable people to get on and off the bus. Um, another thing we'll see here is that in one case we have what we call a downstream bus stop on this side. So you can see there's an intersection in the bus stop. The bus goes through the intersection and then stops. The good thing about this kind of bus stop is when the people get off the bus, if they want to use the crosswalk, they can use it behind the bus. They don't have to go in front of the bus and possibly be obstructed from the view of passing motorists. Here on this side, we're actually in an upstream spot. So these folks right here are waiting on the upstream side. If people get off the bus here when it stops, in this case, we do have this bulb out, so it's a little better, but oftentimes there'll be really little space between the end of the stop and the crosswalk. So no, my first real uh, foray into it was the energy crisis hit, and uh, they said, do you want to be the head of the energy department? And I raised my hand and said yes, and it's kind of one of those things, who wouldn't want the job? Didn't have a job description, didn't have a predecessor, didn't have anybody else there, and there was no Google. So what I found throughout my, my life was, in fact, every time I took on a job, I took on a job that was a, as a change agent. Um, because I can't imagine walking into a job where the guy that did it before, and my business was always a guy, the guy who did it before was perfect. And nobody could figure out how it could be any better. And you know, the, the finances were going the right way. How boring is that? So I found myself going in and building this reputation that give it to Lana, she can make it work. And I think that just means because I worked harder than anybody else and I built really good teams. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about some movies that are coming out this week, and it's time for Pre-Critic. Ah, uh, yes. We have a yet another Terminator movie about the future of technology, which is the end of mankind. It's time for Terminator Dark Fate. Welcome to the end of the world. Um, uh, that has come again, and will probably come again and again. We jump back into a world where machines have taken over, and we're just like, okay, let's do this again, again, again. Uh, Terminator Dark Fate brings Sarah Connor back. Linda Hamilton's back, so that means uh, she'll be back, and everyone will say, I'll be back, and all that stuff. Uh, of course, once she left in the first place, creating this whole bad movie franchise deal, we get things like killer robots, human fighting the robots, and then that's pretty much it. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's really not a complicated script. It's all about like having set pieces to propel the characters forward. And a lot of times uh, when you have action set pieces, it's more just like 
there's a lot of action, but you have to write around the action a lot of times. I don't know. It's it's kind of ridiculous, but you can expect a lot of things happening. They're trying to get from point A to point B, while at the same time trying to survive the... Um, so I was about to say zombie apocalypse, but at this point, who really cares? <laughs> and another movie that's coming out, but this is mostly like a Netflix movie that's popping up, but it's going to have some uh, time in, in the theaters. It's called The Irishman. Time for some real cinema, folks, at home. We have a streaming platform pay one of the uh, wet slash sticky bandits out of retirement for a large sum of money, which after gone fishing, they should really know their worth. Uh, de age to, to a simpler time. When Martin Scorsese made films about gangsters and the fall of men while their wives are pushed to the side and called crazy for some for all the wrong reasons. Anyways, the Irishman is about is about mafia and Jimmy Hoffa and all that jazz. Uh, leading to his mysterious death slash disappearance, which is still up in the air because they still haven't found Jimmy Hoffa's body. So the story is mostly the everything else and a lot of time skips, bad wigs, and some de-aging technology all in the mix. And next, we got another movie which probably is not going to be on par with any of these movies. But hey, if you're going to go see Terminator Dark Fate and you're uh, worried about your kids seeing a, a violent movie, then you can send them to Arctic Dogs. Hey, remember Balto? That dog was like a half wolf thing? Well, now we get an Arctic fox who is like, I want to be on the sled team. But it's more like anamorphic kind of animals who are just like, I'm walking around and talking and that kind of stuff. So they completely forget up the, about the human counterpart. So anyways, talking animated animals. Um, there's a scene probably where it's just like, I undermessed, like after, I don't know if they win. This might be one of those th things that's just like, the victory is that the fact that I got to play a sled dog in the first place. And uh, the whole end of the movie is like the uh, the hero sled dog guy is just like, I underestimated you, kid. Good job. Next year, I'll win for sure. Oh, hey, random insert here, girl. Kiss, kiss. The end. Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. All right. <laughs> so those are some movies that are coming out this weekend as well. I have a movie that uh, I participated in, but I had not too much to do with. But I think this is a really fun movie that uh, – some of the kids uh, that I work with made. Um, last Sunday, um, we met up at the Greeno Park and we decided to make a, a Monty Python um, sketch. And so without further ado, here's Monty Python and the Black Knight scene featuring Graham, Tyler, and uh, Neil here at MCAT. So without further ado, here's that. And when I come back, I'm gonna be talking about um, some city council stuff. So stay with me.
You fight with the strength of many men, Sir Knight. I am Arthur, King of the Britons. I seek the finest and the bravest knights in the land to join my court in Camelot. You've proved yourself worthy, Sir Knight. Will you join me? You make me sad. So be it. Come on, Patsy. None shall pass. What? None shall pass. I have no quarrel with you, good Sir Knight, but I must pass. Then you shall die. I command you as King of the Britons to stand aside. I move for no man. So be it. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. It's this but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off! No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? Oh, that works. You liar! Come on, you pansy! Victory is mine! You are indeed brave tonight, but the fight is mine. Oh, have enough, eh? Look, you stupid bastard, you have no arms left. Yes, I have. Look! Just a flesh wound. Stop that! Chicken! Chicken! I'll have your leg! Right! Right, I'll do you for that. Come here! What are you gonna do? Bleed on me? I'm invincible! Yo, loony! The Black Knight always triumphs! How about you? Come on, man! <laughs> Alright then, a glowing draw! Come, Patsy! Oh, I see ya! Run away! You yellow bastards! Come back here and come what's coming to you! I'll bite your legs off! Maybe I should have coordinated some of the uh, background dogs out of the scene. I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening within the city of Missoula. So during public comment, uh, some uh, some of the usual suspects came back to uh, oppose their concern about the uh, about having the city of Missoula overhaul TIFFs and just completely have them um, not do them anymore. Um, so a lot of times TIFFs uh, TIFFs have. Kind of uh, the tax increments financial has been a controversial in the community as paying for developers to come to Missoula, a bad reputation since the completion of the Merck Hotel and Marriott. But here is Brandon Wright, a Missoula resident, t uh, talking about TIFFs. I'm calling for an investigation into the ethical conduct of the city council as well as the mayor and everyone involved in the uh, TIFF projects that are going on in this city because I feel like they are in violation of the community trust and the legacy that my grandparents and my family have put into this town, including myself. I've spoken on the world stage in front of the United Nations, and I am distraught to find the same corruption that I have found that I whistle blew against in front of the entire world to be in my own backyard. All right, so that was Dylan Wright talking about that. I have one more quote from another uh, person as well, Brandon Zimmerman uh, uh, claiming rezoning favors urbanization in the city of Missoula, um, which invites TIFFs. 
In recent years, the public urban planning conversation has been dominated by urbanism, a bland quasi-progressive ideology that typically lacks any coherent class or power analysis. Now, a dominant tendency among city planners and many municipal politi politicians, urbanism treats procedural changes like tweaks to zoning laws as keys to solving the problems of the modern city. Because urbanism dominates discussions about cities, about what ails them and how to fix them, structural analysis have been sorely lacking. The discourse around gentrification still focuses too much on fancy coffee shops and not enough on systematic disinvestment in areas inhabited by people of color and the working class. For urbanists, unaffordable housing can be solved by increasing the amount and density of housing units through upzoning, while a more structural analysis would focus on rent control or building more public housing. All right, so uh, that was Zimmerman. Mr. Zimmerman uh, spoke a little bit more on uh, TIFFs and how the city uses them to in incentivize developers to come and build in Missoula and get reimbursed for the projects. Most of what the city is doing with the tax increment finances uh, is utilizing the developers uh, construction to uh, build sidewalks, build lighting, uh, build improvements to the infrastructure while giving them tax credits as a result. That's the uh, simple explanation of most of it as well. Um, so let's have uh, one of the city council members who talks a little bit later because there's no, uh, uh, this isn't an open discussion type item during public uh, city uh, council and public comment because it's comment, not conversation. Heidi West talks about uh, TIFFs as well. I was low on how much, uh, I reached out to Chris at the MRA to uh, get a more accurate number of how much um, money has been spent on permanently affordable housing, whether that's rental or home ownership in our Missoula TIF districts. And the number that he came up with, uh, which is more comprehensive because he knows more than I do, um, is $1,592,596. Um, and that does not include financing for things such as the food bank or the Pavarello or the YWCA housing um, because those aren't considered low, um, long income housing. So those weren't those sorts of um, uh, grants or uh, funding mechanisms were not included here. So just a little more information, not that anyone sticks around to hear it. All right. So um, up next, we have uh, Brian Von Lossberg, a city council member as well. He also reflects on TIFFs to talk a little bit more. About I it. have mentioned on a number of occasions, several projects, and I, um, I truly understand the issue that, that folks see across the country when it comes to um, income inequality and the things that flow uh, from that. At the same time, um, we uh, should remember that tax increment fi financing is used for reimbursable expenses. It is not a giveaway to anybody, and the expenses that are covered are expenses that are deemed to be for the public benefit in things like the public right-of-way deconstruction versus demolition and the value we place on that from a number of standpoints, just to name a few. Um, and if you uh, or to look at a project like the Edgel Housing Project in the north side um, as one of the more affordable projects, it is absolutely clear that that project would not exist without the tax increment financing investment in things like water and sewer and basic infrastructure that then makes a housing project like that possible. And, and were it to even happen without those investments, it would be uh, considerably, um, it's doubtful it would happen at all. All right, so that was uh, Brian Velasberg. Uh, think about it in terms of this. Um, you have a developer that's coming to town. They basically want to develop housing and stuff, that, stuff like that. But at the same time, they, the spot that they're, they're choosing doesn't have hookups to the sewer, water, or anything like that, so they have to pass. Um, so the TIF funding is to encourage people to be like, hey, if you uh, develop the infrastructure of this place along with building the place, you'll be able to do this as well. But I also want to uh, mention that you guys should check it out. Uh, Chris Pien uh, was here interviewed about TIFFs, and it is available on our website, MCAT.org. I'm going to show you guys once again. So if you look at, uh, let's see, the top of this guy right here, um, let's see, you can see the TIFF show, 
with Chris Pian. So Chris Pian, uh, he talks a little bit more about it. You can click on here. It is our our website, MCAT.org. You go to channel 190. It brings up this page. He is uh, one of the folks that are featured, um, and he talks about TIFFs. So, and he's the guy uh, who uh, has all the knowledge, all the numbers, and he's the one that gave the numbers to Heidi West about uh, how much money is in the TIFF budget as well. And he's the perfect guy to talk to in terms of TIFFs and what they're being used for and the money that's not being taken away from other services in the city of Missoula. So if you want to educate yourself, co uh, contact Chris. You can also go to uh, M Missoula Redevelopment Agency and talk a little bit more about him. Uh, there's a lot of people within the city government that you can converse with and talk to as well. Um, but let us uh, that's pretty much it for the city council portion. But I do want to talk about public safety and health because there's a lot of stuff going on here. And the, they are, one of the biggest things they're talking about is the crime victim advocates are seeing about 140 uh, cases per month revolving around domestic violence. 60% are walking cases looking for direction and restraining orders. Uh, these are assaults in the domestic sense, even though sometimes they are considered aggravated assault, which is all in uh, in consuming. Uh, sorry, I, I, I totally misspelled a word I don't even recognize now. <laughs> but the thing is, is that uh, a lot of different uh, versions of assault, domestic assault, uh, domestic assault within the house uh, can be um, considered aggravated assault, which is not which is not actually uh, put into the numbers. So there's still a lot of numbers that aren't officially in there. Uh, Chantel Gaynor, Relationship Violence Services, highlights uh, some more uh, things that are happening within the uh, Crime Advocates program. I do want to point out that we had 16 cases that included strangulation and one of the reasons why we highlight strangulation is because it, it can be a sign of increased lethality. Uh, when law enforcement officers are interviewing victims at the scene, it's one of the questions they ask and if somebody says that they have been strangled, smothered or sometimes people use the phrase choked, um, that it's an immediate red flag. So when an abuser is using these sorts of tactics, it immediately gains control over a victim, but it's also a sign that they're they're open to using more violence. And so that this is a, a, an important thing for us to be tracking as a community. Um, and Jenny can speak a little bit more to it, but we're gonna be sending a team to uh, advanced training in the coming months. And um, so we will be furthering our practice on this. And it's not the first time that we've sent a team, but it is, um, it, we're due for a new team to go. All right, so the point of this uh, meeting is to give updates to uh, the public safety and health. Uh, uh, this is a quarterly update, um, and I wanted to kind of highlight this as well. The Violence Against Women Act is a federal bill that has been holed up, and of course, it has. It was passed in 1994 during the Clinton administration, um, but they wanted to include that anybody that was uh, accused of domestic violence would not be allowed to buy a gun. So that's one of the things that are going there on there as well. Um, and this was also to, also to include LGBT and transgender individuals who are victims of domestic violence as well. Revisions, uh, there's, a lot, there's definitely a lot going on there as well. And uh, Chantel uh, Gaynor talks a little bit more about um, some of that. With the new Violence Against Women Act, what they were looking at, amongst other things, is strengthening gun laws, uh, being able to take guns away from those convicted of domestic violence already exists, but then expanding that to other crimes that are related to domestic violence but don't necessarily get that criminal marker. So like in Montana, it's partner family member assault, but you could be committing domestic violence but actually get charged with disorderly conduct. And so they're looking at trying to close some of those loopholes. Um, All right, so but one of the biggest things that, uh, that uh, the loophole when it comes to buying a gun is that when it comes to any kind of gun laws or any changes, the NRA chimes in and has come against it. And so far it has passed in the House, but it has stalled in the Senate. This could affect the federal money coming in as federal uh, monies have become less and less as a whole to these programs. So a lot of times the uh, crime victim advocates, uh, the uh, relationship violence services are looking for more local money to uh, help out with them as well. Um, and also I uh, wanted to uh, figure out how to uh, help women who are uh, incarcerated because most 80% of incarcerated women come from abuse. So, and this is what she, uh, uh, Chantel Gaynor said about this. When you have systems of abuse and systems of trauma, criminal activity is one of the things that we would actually expect to see as uh, folks are trying to deal with 
their world that seems to be falling apart and um, might not be showing up at their jobs, might not uh, have access to health care, might be self-medicating, and all of these are pathways that might end you up in the criminal justice system. So thinking about that as we have people coming out of incarceration, that our treatments need to be tailored not just to... Um, a lot of our treatments are really standardized around uh, an incarcerated man and don't necess aren't necessarily tailored for women and don't necessarily have that lens of sexual and domestic violence victimization and trauma-informed care. And we don't think about trauma-informed care for folks coming out of incarceration. It's not our first thought. And so um, I don't have any recommendations around this, but it's information bringing back and certainly having conversations around. All right. So... Um Oh, that's kind of like the, the, the first major point that they want to talk about in terms of this. One of the things that Relation Violence Services left me with was there are no levels of victims of domestic violence situations, just victims. Uh, they give updates every quarter, so so far the biggest takeaway from this is the need for money. And the fear of federal funding may be cut for a lot of these programs to help uh, victims of domestic violence and also uh, help those who committed those crimes to, to prevent them from committing more crimes as well. Um, Kelly McGuire, so moving on to another segment, and this is uh, basically about building relationships with other people and other part of the community and protecting women in um, Make Your Move. So Kelly McGuire, Prevention Division Manager, talks about uh, many youth training opportunities for the reduced domestic violence. Wheeler High School and Washington Middle School are among the kids who will have these programs in place. And this is uh, Kelly McGuire talking a little bit about this. So they are programs that we've been doing for a number of years. So we have a curriculum called Power Up Speak Out um, that was developed in Red Lodge, and that has been taught in MCPS middle schools um, for at least the past oh, four years, um, maybe five years, um, as well as a bunch of the more rural middle schools um, surrounding the city. Um, so that's the program we're teaching there. And then in high school, we have a healthy relationships and a consent lesson that we teach. Um, so the goal is to have all the schools teaching the same information. Um, however, we don't really have enough hours to be at every school teaching all the lessons. And so we're also at the same time working with the school district to create uh, resources for teachers, lesson plans for teachers based on the best available evidence on, on how to make headway on this issue. Um, looking at putting on trainings for teachers um, so that they have all the tools and knowledge to teach this subject well and that they're teaching it in a consistent manner. Yeah. Ms. Jones? All right, so I did want to speak a little bit more personally on this matter. Um, one of the... Uh, um one of my kids uh, that goes to one of the schools in town um, witnessed uh, some un unnecessary groping of another of another student, and this is kind of like an ongoing thing that not much was being done in terms of like getting things uh, dealt with in terms of this. And there was a lot of people who came forward and uh, complained about a certain student as well. So one of the things that uh, was done is um, a lot of times you need the the right kind of people to talk to about this as well and you need to speak up about this because a lot of times um, you need more than just one person to really kind of speak up against uh, inappro inappropriate behavior that can um, trickle uh, into a worse behavior because a lot of times bad behavior unchecked becomes worse behavior. But I want to go back into this as well because um, many of the things that Kelly McGuire and her organization is trying to do is pay teens. So this is a, a job opportunity for a lot of teenagers within the city of Missoula to actually learn and teach other kids within their school about uh, making your move and prevention of sexual abuse and violence towards one each other and to help grow these domestic violence prevention programs along with teens and youth alike. Brenna Merrill with the Make Your Move Council, they are committed to end sexual violence and this is what she had to say. Um, we've been kind of especially for our adult work, expanding the way that we think about consent from rather than just agreement, but agreement, desire, ethics, and then fun and joy and pleasure. Um, you gotta do the shimmy when you say it. Um, <laughs> Um, and so um, being able to kind of bring this to a national level and talk about um, how consent can, how we can talk about it in a way that applies to people's lives um, in a kind of more real way. Um, and for so many 
professionals across the country then to, to find value in our presentation. Um, it was just nice to feel. All right. So I wanted to also mention that one of the, my favorite things about Make Your Move campaign is that uh, they moved away from using the, the term sex because a lot of times parents and their kids have this very awkward conversation when they talk about sex in the first place. But consent Consent is something that's kind of uh, come up as something that's more than just about sex, but also about uh, allowing people permission, that kind of deal. And uh, a lot of times there's a certain boundary that we put on ourselves as well to uh, like, you know, like, you know, get out of my bubble, you know, like you got to keep your bubble. So you got to prevent people from getting in your bubble. But the part of consent is to allow people to kind of um, touch you in a way that's not always sexual, but also in a way that allows people to uh, consent to one another, um, not o only physically, but also on a more of an emotional level. So there's a lot of things going on there, but one of my favorite things about this campaign, Make You Move campaign, is that they've moved forward with trying to teach consent to a lot of younger kids, um, because a lot of times sex is a taboo topic that a lot of people don't like talking about, and a lot of parents don't feel comfortable talking about it with their kids. So consent is a really fun um, new way of uh, approaching this. And if you want more information about this, you can go to their website, which is makeyourmovemissoula.org. It is a wonderful website. Sexual violence can be prevented. One of their goals is to end sexual violence altogether, completely, forever. So yeah, you can check out this website. It's a wonderful source. You know, they have shop, uh, shops, workshops. Um, if you are a pr an organization that has a, a community-driven uh, organization, you guys can invite uh, Make Your Move to come on down and teach you guys about consent and looking for the signs of potential sexual assaults. So that's just one of the many things that are going on in the city of Missoula, and I wanted to kind of end it right there. Um, but here's a couple of cliff notes of some of the other meetings. Community the Whole was all about updates. Ben Wise talks about the bikes through the Missoula in motion many efforts to increase bikes throughout Missoula. One of the things that I wanted to, to do is they wanted to encourage kids to register their bikes because a lot of times uh, this, this is a very bike friendly community, which also means it's a very bike uh, stolen community. And by registering your bike with your, uh, with your name, um, it's easy for uh, bikes to get returned as well. And the coolest thing about this is that bike registration is free. So if you haven't gotten your bike registered, it would be perfect time to get registered as well. Another thing that they talked about in Committee of the Whole is a place called home, which talks about uh, meetings, about meetings. So <laughs> I didn't want to bore you guys with more details about meetings. But long story short, they plan to give quarterly updates to a program as Missoula's downtown master plan gets implemented, which will take about three years to fully get inserted with the uh, downtown master plan. OK. And the big three they take away from a place called home, the downtown master plan update, is affordable housing, connectivity and access to public and alternative transportation so those are the big three that they really wanted to work on and it is community driven uh, the place called home where they had a lot of input from the community of Missoula which had a lot more input in the city of Missoula than they ever did see in Miami Florida think about that that's the community engagement that was put into place for a place called home Missoula's downtown master plan update so that kind of does it for uh, what I had to say there, I have an art clip for you guys, and then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about all some more art, because it is November 1st, Halloween's over, uh, Day of the Dead is still going on as well, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the Festival of Remembrance, formerly known as Day of the Dead, this weekend, but without further ado, here is an art clip, and when I come back, I'm going to have your art guide for the downtown Missoula area for tonight. <laughs>
Ah, some wonderful public art in the downtown Missoula area. It's right now at the uh, Transit Center at the Missoula Mountain Line, just right next to the courthouse. Uh, the, the hub for uh, Mountain Line, Missoula. So you get to see that anytime you want. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece of work of art as well. But speaking of art, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening within your first Friday. It is first Friday today because it's the first Friday of November, which is November 1st. Uh, double win. All right. So... You got Lillian Pitt, Missouri Art Museum. They joined the uh, Missouri Art Museum for the first Friday in November. They explore multimedia work of celebrated artist Lillian Pitt. KBJ will be playing, providing the music and tunes. They always have wine and drinks there as well. So you add, uh, admire Pitt's ancestral homage. So that's pretty cool. Up next, we got a Four Ravens Gallery type deal. Uh, Four Ravens Gallery is next to the Dana Gallery, and it presents the sixth invitational show of Blackbird-inspired art. So Ravens, Blackbird, you get it. Showcasing the new favorite bird in photography, mixed media, metal, pastels, clay, and traditional pine needle bakery. Uh, no, basket tree. Basket tree. Sorry. Uh, artists include DJ House. DG House, not DJ House. Sorry. Um, Larry Blackwood. Judy Arledge, uh, George Yabara, uh, Brenda Wolf, and Bill Ryder. So, uh, George Yabara, great metal work. He works with copper. It's wonderful. Uh, next, we have Under the Mountains, Jake we Weigel at Frontier Space. Um, Frontier Space, uh, it continues the focus of a spatial awareness that explores the pr uh, proofers' information not easily grasped, distilling a moment of material material uh, materiality. Uh, this is this initially a lack of clear definition achieved by the continuous play between the revelation and concealment of object and illusion, existence and essence. He is a, uh, Jake Weigel is an assistant professor of art sculpture in California State University. Uh, so, uh, so he is a multidisciplinary artist with focus in object making and installation, a method that combined with the research in art theory, labor and fine craft traditions so you can check out some of the art as there um it's going to be at the frontier space in the, the missoula area up next we got the atoms of our frames which is featuring at the radius gallery um the act of imagination is ever attended by pure delight it infuses a certain uh vol validity and intoxication into all nature it has a flute which set the atoms of our frame in a dance our intermediate size is a delicious secret which is revealed to us uh, the mountains begin to dislim and float in the air up next we got noteworthy paper and press featuring bt livermore um bt livermore is a printmaker sign painter designer woodworker and journal maker of all things um living and working in montana bt's focus mainly on hand lettering and cartoonish illustrations in bright bold colors um, you can find out more about BT's work at btlivermore.com. Up next, we got Kelly uh, Kelly Sherman at Ceramics at Clyde Coffee. Uh, you know, the, this collection represents the honors of meditative form, the process of shaping and reshaping clay, and filling, of filling and emptying the body through movement and art work. Becomes a physical meditation. She uh, dis disappears into an emerge from over and over again. The sculptures are the manifesti manifestation of the process. They're meant to celebrate this uh, 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 the nature of all things, the circular, circular. I can say it, but I can't read it, as well as the stillness that allows us to renew and re-engage with the world around us. Uh, we got two more. Uh, this is the reception of the Clay Studio of Missoula. This is Clay AF. This is an art exhibit featuring graduates and post-baccalaureate ceramicists, students at the University of Montana. It's hosted by the Clay Studio of Missoula. There's a lot of artists also, as students at the university. This art exhibit will share works that reflects the commitment of the university's ceramics department towards individual expression and experimentation. Finally, we got this guy right here. This is going to be at the frame of mind, and this is uh, Timothy Arrowtop. You may recognize his name from the Jurd Art Expo of this year. If you don't, no worries. Timothy Arrowtop was the winner of the Junior's Choice Awards, and this award comes to show, solo show here at Frame of Mind. And Frame of Mind is further up. It's off of Brook Street by that uh, strange light before we get over to Rose Park. Frame of Mind, it's right there. 
He went to the University of Montana with a BA in Native American Studies and is self-taught in film and darkroom techniques. Much of his work focuses on the contrast of contemporary restoration life with his current residency in a non-native city. So those are some of the artists that are going to be featured at First Friday. First Friday happens from 5 to 8 p.m. every first Friday of the month, and those are just a rundown of some of those arts as well. All right, so here is from here's a brand new dub and stuff where I take art from the past art and I redub it in my own voice so this is in the year 2889 oh yeah this is gonna look so good and patty cake ah, I surrender what, what the heck <laughs> you might be wondering why I'm in your living room my name is Sebastian don't you ever forget it I'm a man I have a gun in my hand. Well, uh, you're, you're very convincing, young man. Uh, just what the heck do you want, anyways? I'm I'm trying to sleep, can't you tell? But no, you have to be rude. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, old man. That I have the gun. Oh, no, no, I mean the gun. So I'm the one that asks the questions. And you, hopefully, will give me all the answers. Oh, God, jeez, where am I? Ugh, can I just find anything around here? This is so frustrating. Come on now. <laughs> I see Hector is on a wild goose chase. Maybe he'll find the thing. Maybe he won't. I'm not sure. What do you think? Oh, come on. Just because I have a gun doesn't mean you have to be afraid. I'm your friend after all. Just trust me. Ugh. You wake me up from a nap and you expect me to trust you? Forget it. You were clearly faking it. <laughs> after all... If everyone knows that you have trouble sleeping, don't you know that? Yeah, I guess. I'm gonna go check on Hector. <laughs> Just as I thought, nothing interesting happening at all. So, um, um, uh, okay. Oh, uh, man. Now, trying to come up with a conversation topic is very hard. Um, do you want to talk about anything? Uh, well, let me tell you. Oh, was that lightning? Oh, well... Guess I'll just take this maiden down to the river. Maybe I'll throw her in there. Gross. Can you think of a better place to kill me? Oh, I can't think of anything better. Dun, 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 oh, dun, there's dun, my hero song. Ah, oh. oh no, I'll just take her. But da da Oh, you're getting harder and harder to carry. Could you just? <laughs> you're not monster you just... enough to okay, carry there me. You go. Fine, I don't care anyway. Just get out of here. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I gotta get out of here. Oh, okay. I probably should run more than look behind me. Oh, what the? So I'm walking into this river to do, like, an album cover for my band. Oh, man. I don't know why I'm stopping. Uh, I better get going. Die, monster. Bang. Oh, come on now. Bang. That's just rude. Um, I'm down here. Could you, like, save me? Oh, these bolts don't work on this guy. See ya! <sighs> well, any minute now. Come on. Hurry up. Blimey. <laughs> well, it's about time. This monster carried me and then just got really tired. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, better get out of here. See ya! I make those videos so I can have a break. Now it's time to talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's the Historic Museum book sale. Uh, I have a fun video I want to quickly show you guys as well. If you guys get a chance, you get to see all the books that come and go. Here's a nice time-lapse video provided by MCAT's uh, camera. We were able to uh, um, get a nice time-lapse of the book sale, which is going on now. It goes on now until most of the books are gone, but uh, if you want a more of a solid timeline, it's Sunday at 5 p.m. is when they close, so you want to get a chance to check out all these books. <laughs> get it, books, but it's more like buying a book. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, it's one of those, it's one of the larger book sales in the city of Missoula, and they use this to fund many of the programs at the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. Isn't that cool? I like that. It's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> Um, so, 
this is so it basically kicked off yesterday and it's going to go on su till Sunday at 4 p.m. Sorry, I misspoke about 5 p.m. because uh, today it's going to go on till 5 p.m. Saturday it's going to go on till 5 p.m., which is kind of weird because I was thinking to myself that um, if it's going to go on until 5 p.m. today, wouldn't it be a little more appropriate if they actually had a later night hours for your Friday night as well for some of the people who are just getting off work? I don't know. Not my business. So. Uh, is this going to happen? It's your unique collection. You can see all sorts of uh, historic reading material. A lot of people, they always donate a uh, bunch of books there. They have too many books that people donate. They have over 60,000 books titles. So you can check it out. It's going to be at the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. You can't miss it. There'll be a whole bunch of signs there. Um, Hands-on science, spooky experiments. They're continuing on some of their spooky experiments. If you uh, missed out on a couple of the um, Halloween exhibits at Spectrum Discovery Center, they still have a couple things. Um, they're going to do some light play in their maker space as well. Cribbage and, Bri Cribbage and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center. You guys can check that out. You should make some Cribbage and Bridge, have uh, some lunch at the Missoula Senior Center at the best dance floor in Missoula. YMCA Family Fun Time from 3.30 to 5 p.m., $17 for non-members. It is a great opportunity for families to get together, enjoy uh, the resources here in Missoula for pool, um, workout equipment, all sorts of things at the YMCA as well. Um, if you know know what the YMCA is by now, then you're crazy because everyone knows what the YMCA is for. Um, <laughs> going there and saying that you're going to get a membership, but you just don't. You just go in anyways. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Building community with pride. There's the LGBTQ Summit in Missoula. There's going to be the old building in across from Pita Pit in downtown Missoula. It's the uh, Western Montana Community Center. Um, you can, it's first Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. You can enjoy a meet and greet and come by the uh, Center for First Friday Art Show. Enjoy some hors d'oeuvres, a great opportunity to see our space and speak with their board members on a nice, relaxed environment. Um, they're also doing another event on Saturday uh, where they have a LGBTQ summit, but this is a nice meet and greet to uh, uh, have a nice conversation with them as well. Missoula Haunted House, they're going on until 11 p.m. at the lake tonight it's their annual tradition of Missoula Haunted House and this is like kind of like a post Halloween day so if anybody wanted to do a post Halloween um, Haunted House this would be the perfect time to do it it goes until about 11 p.m. tonight but at the same time if you if you're around that area why not go to a uh, hockey game so the Missoula Bruins is versing Yellowstone Quake hockey um, your Missoula Bruins pro the uh, Yellowstone Quake. It's happening at 7 p.m. tonight at the uh, Glacier Ice Rink. Uh, but also, MCT is doing Freaky Friday. The Missoula uh, Community Theater would probably present the musical Freaky Friday based on the movies that were made a couple of years ago, the Lindsay Lohan and, uh, uh, I'm blanking on her name, Jamie Lee Curtis movie. Uh, when a story is genuinely compelling, it contains the powerful to power to be told in many different ways, and in this case, a musical. Freaky Friday is premiering most nights at 7.30 p.m., Sunday at 6.30 p.m., but matinees on Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. You can check it out. Uh, it is a wonderful original story from 1972, Mary Rogers' book, which was released and subsequently produced into the two successful films as we see it. Saturday, Big Sky Holiday Craft Fair, Big Sky High School. Hey! <laughs> it's never too <laughs> never too soon for the holiday season because if you haven't already seen already, holiday is already in the air. Uh, holiday Crafter from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Locally made arts, crafts, and specialty food items kicking off at B Big Sky High School on Saturday. Um, art workshops, Living Art of Montana, which I heard is closing, which is sad. But they're still doing an art workshop, Simple Greetings, Festive Seasonal Cards. Um, Living Art of Montana offers free workshops for people who have cancer, an acute or chronic disease, are suffering from consequences of treatment, have a significant loss in their lives, and their caregivers. Uh, so the whole idea is that it's going to be happening with uh, Loretta, uh, they're doing f uh, festive uh, seasonal cards, and it's happening from 10.30 to 11.30 p.m., and Living Art is located on, um, oh, it's, I think it's 725 West Front Street, or something like that. But you can always look it up, livingartofmontana.org, for more information about it as well. Drum Coffee is doing a record sale, so if you have any old records and you want to, or if you're looking to buy some new records, there's their East Broadway, uh, 1000 East Broadway address from 11 to 4 p.m. at their larger Drum Coffee facility just across from the uh, uh, Trempers uh, um, Albertsons. Oof, man, I'm blanking. I'm trying, this is, this is me trying to ad-lib. 
but let's actually st stick to the script. They're doing a film screening, The Line and Legacy of Rick Barto. Missoula Art Museum, Missoula Art Museum invites you at 1 p.m. to join the Celebrate the Life and Legacy of, of Exhibit Artist Rick Barrow. They will screen a short film, The Line and Legacy of Rick Barrow, produced by Jordan Schneitzer, Museum Art Arts. A Museum of Art at the University of Oregon. This film outlines the artist's creative process, his struggles, and his dedication to sustaining the mystery of his work, and is free and open to the public, starting at 1 p.m. But also, um, what's happening at 1 p.m., which is not free, is the MCAT Saturday drop-in. From 1 to 5 p.m., uh, kids get to come on down um, and and enjoy a creative environment where they do stop animation, some live action film. Basically what MCAT's all about, MCAT is all about uh, cultivating creativity through a television medium. And it is a wonderful resource for a lot of people in the community as well. But this one is geared towards the kids from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday. I don't know a Saturday that we're not going to do it. It's pretty much every single Saturday, all year long, until uh, the end of mem until Memorial Day weekend, where we uh, stop the Saturday drop-ins for our summer camps this summer. Missoula Fester Festival of Remembrance. I talked a little bit about this. It's formerly known as the Festival of the Dead. Uh, this 27th annual Missoula Festival of Remembrance, honoring the dead, celebrating life, starts in early October and culminates with the annual proceeding downtown Higgins on Saturday. So the parade starts at 5:30. They have a pre-procession of the Circle Square. Uh, they have a seven. Uh, PM procession. There's 7:30, around 7:30-ish. Um, fin finale at Karis Park with performances by the UM African Dance Class. There's the uh, Hipsy Gypsies and the Dark Moon Tribal, um, and that's what's happening um, with that. But also there's a drag show happening at the Zootown Arts Community Center. Zootown Arts Community Center opened up just last week, and tonight, uh, t uh, Saturday, Saturday night at 7 p.m. they're doing a Zootown Art Center. There's open for the. Uh, ISCSM and the center presents amateur drag night at the Zach. So if you're interested in drag or being a part of drag, you can sign up there. Um, they're doing a drag workshop on uh, they already did an October the, a drag workshop on the 31st. So you missed it. Um, so this is an all age amateur drag show night. It's uh, five dollars at the door. Show starts at eight. Doors open at seven. And these interested in performing for the drag amateur night, you can email them outreachmc at is csm.org. Again, that is outreach, SSSMC at ISCSM.org. All right, so those are your events. And I think I just ended the show pretty, uh, pretty good. It's pretty tight. It was a pretty tight show. I feel as though that I have a couple more minutes to talk a little bit about this and that. But I wanted to mention once again uh, that the election is happening really close. And if you haven't already made your decision on who you want to represent your ward in the city of Missoula, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org. You can click on Watch Channel 190. And besides watching um, Chris Bean about the TIFFs in Missoula and an in-depth look at the TIFFs and how they work, uh, you can look at some of the candidates. You got Alan Alt, Amber Sherrill, Gwen Jones, Alex Ferregio, Amber Schaefer, um, Drew Iverson, Heidi West, uh, Murder Becerra, Nick Schantz, and Sandra Vaseca. So those are the candidates that interviewed um, Joel Baird, general manager, reached out to all candidates within the city of Missoula. And these are the folks who got back to him. And um, yeah, so you can check out all the interviews. You can have a name to a face, and it is a wonderful representation of the city of Missoula and people who are want to get involved with in, within the city of Missoula. All right, that's enough of that. Um, what else do I need to say? Nothing really. So I'll just end the show. I want to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Skyrim. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and hopefully it'll get a little bit warmer. So without further ado, thank you and goodbye.